thank you all for joining us today. I'm very happy to say that it's not just me talking, you're probably all delighted. Um, but we also have three guest speakers today. So we have Sienna, and we have Kate, and we have Lauren. Okay, and they're all going to talk today and they're all part, they're all students here at the Tappan Institute and they're all going to be giving a little bit of their own story and they've all done internships here with us at the Tappan Institute and the two girls are still in Italy at the moment and then Sienna um, had, did our Thailand internship but they'll talk to you about that. What we're going to do um, is kind of run through their little stories and as I said you know please feel free this is an interactive session so please 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 um you know write if you have any questions please put them into the chat box if there's anything that you kind of want answered in this session the more you kind of ask us the more you get out of it this interactive session is for you um so please feel free to write to write here. um and yeah it's just to get a little bit of, depth, a little bit of knowledge about the situations and being an intern and going off on these experiences and everything along those lines so I'm going to start off by letting, um, I suppose, Sienna, if you want to go ahead um, and kind of give your own a bit of background and your top tips for teaching um, as an intern. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sienna. I'm originally from Hawaii and I studied economics in Boston. Um, after I graduated from university, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I really wanted to travel and live abroad. And I thought that teaching English was the perfect opportunity to do, to do that. So I found uh, the TEFL Institute and saw that they had these internship programs. And I really liked the Thailand one because I figured it was a great opportunity for me to get my TEFL certification as well as gain teaching experience because I thought it might be a bit difficult and challenging to get a job with no experience. And I was a bit nervous about that. So I completed the program online and I really liked that I was able to work at my own pace. Um, and when I finished, the Temple Institute was really helpful, like helping me prepare before leaving for Thailand as well as while I was there. Um, so the counterparts there for the internship program, I went to Bangkok, flew into Bangkok in October, and there's a three-day orientation, which I really loved because they really ran through everything that you need to know about, like Thai culture, things to do, things not to do, um, and it was a great opportunity because everyone else that was there was in the same shoes as me, so I was able to meet so many people from all over the world who are also going to be teaching in Thailand all over the country and I made great friends so that while I was teaching I was able to visit them throughout Thailand which was really fun um, and so after the orientation I went up to my town I was in the northern part of Thailand in a town called Suang Dandan um, it's about two hours from like the nearest big city there and I taught 13-year-olds and 18-year-olds communicative English. Um, I was really nervous when I was first starting because, like I mentioned, I had no experience teaching. But at the Temple Institute and the company that I worked for there were really helpful. They provided us with materials, like helped us come up with lesson plans. So I didn't feel like I was just kind of like thrown in the deep end. They really helped walk me through it. Um, and it was so much fun. I rode, I rented a motorbike. So I drove to school every day. There were about six of us English teachers in the town that I was in. So it was really nice to have other people who spoke English and who are kind of in the same shoes as me. And throughout my experience, almost every other weekend, or at least once a month, I would travel to a new place in Thailand, either with the other teachers in my town or the friends that I had made during orientation. So I went to Chiang Mai, um, I went to Pattaya, I went all over Thailand. Um, and a bunch of the friends that I made there actually ended up staying for another term. Um, but after I finished teaching English, I decided to travel around Southeast Asia. So I was able to go to Bali, Singapore, um, Cambodia, backpack Vietnam, Laos, and really just see as much as I could. And I absolutely loved the experience. 
it was so much fun. And the friends that I made there, I did the program about two years ago now. I'm still friends with them today. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to see them because of COVID, but before that, we did do like a meetup and we're hoping to all do a meetup in a year or two. Um, and the tips I would say that I have for anyone who's thinking about doing it is to just go all in, um, just kind of say yes to every experience that you can while you're there, because it's so such an amazing opportunity. You make friends that will last a lifetime. It's so much fun. And another tip I have is just to try your best at the language. It might be like nerve wracking and at first, but even if you make mistakes, everyone there really appreciates you trying to speak the language. Um, and I guess another tip I'd have would just to kind of do a little bit of research before you go, just so you can be culturally aware of the do's and don'ts because something that's okay, like in Ireland or the US might not be okay in the country that you're going to. So for example, in Thailand, they're very concerned about like their feet and their money. Their king is like, they revere them. So it's illegal to step on money on the ground. So that's definitely, just do your research before just so you don't have any faux pas while you're there. Um, but definitely my biggest one is just to go all in when you're there. Yeah, that's great, Sienna. And I was just saying there in the chat box, guys, if you have any particular questions on Thailand, then we can put them in here um, and kind of maybe run through them there. I just got a direct message just about Thailand saying um, that on the website, they noticed that the internship was actually closed at the moment. So that is true. Um, the internship at the moment is completely full for October, but we do have a featured Thailand job, which works very similar so there's still option to go to thailand in october it's just a longer commitment okay so normally the internship that like the one that sienna did is four and a half months but this one is actually 12 months so that's the only difference but there definitely is spots still for thailand um if you're interested guys and what would you say sienna for somebody who might be going off on their their first time um i mean do you think there's anything they should do or make somebody feel a little bit more reassured if they're going on their own? Yeah, I mean, I, so that was my first time teaching English about as well. Um, and I was going by myself too. And definitely nervous. Um, but I know like there are our Facebook groups ahead of time that you can join too. Um, I personally didn't, but a lot of the friends that I made there had joined like a Facebook group. So they were able to meet people virtually before departing, which I think helped a lot when they got there because you kind of already have that support group of people who are in the exact same shoes as you. Because I think 99% of the people who were there, like it was their first time doing it. And well, the orientation, it was their first time, of course. And the majority of the people were by themselves too. So it's comforting knowing that like you're not alone. Everyone else is in the same shoes as you. And it's a great opportunity to meet new people and everyone's looking to meet new people and make friends. And you really, once you're there, you won't feel nervous at all. It's just kind of getting over the nerves before you leave. I think it's the hardest part. Absolutely. And I just got another direct message in there, um, Sienna, if you're okay to answer it. Um, just with, um, they said, um, what's it like starting on a class, like teaching in the classroom? Are you an assistant or do you get help? Um, actually, the actual teaching part. Yeah, so I, it really depends on the, on the school that you're in. So for me personally, I was the only one in the classroom. So I was teaching on my own. Um, I, was, I was really nervous at first, but the orientation, like we did practice classes, practice um, lesson plans, everything like that. So that really helped ease my nerves because I'd never taught a class before. And once you get through like the first couple ones, you're totally fine. Um, but some of my friends, they were like teaching assistants. So they had, um, they had a Thai teacher in the room who obviously spoke Thai and was able to assist them and like help keep everyone in line pretty much. But it really depended on the, on the school that you're in. You could be by yourself or you could have uh, another teacher in the room. Yeah, yeah, great. 
Um, and guys, if anybody thinks of any kind of questions that they want to ask in particular on Thailand or in Asia throughout the session, um, just feel free. And there's just a question gone in there, Sienna, as well. What would you say the overall cost was for your time there? So, Fee, do you mean like cost of living? Do you mean was the, the stipend you got enough to kind of live? Um, if you could go into a little bit more detail there. But Sienna, what would you say the overall cost was? Yeah, so the U.S. equivalent of how much I made a month was about $1,000. And like the cost of living there was about, in the town that I was in, it was about $500, five to oh. six or seven hundred dollars. Um, so definitely left room for me to use to travel um, around the country and especially like with like their bus systems or renting a moped, things like that. Um, and then afterwards, so I had saved up some money before I left, but it was only like a thousand or two thousand um, because I knew I wanted to travel afterwards. And while I was there, I also taught English virtually online just to make some extra money so I could travel more. <laughs> but even if you don't do that, it's more than enough to live. It just depends on how much money you want to, how much you want to travel. I think afterwards, I probably spent about $5,000 just traveling, I think. Um, so, it really, yeah. so it really depends on how much you want to travel. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a question there from Niamh. I'm currently enrolled in the 120 hour course. Is that enough to teach in Thailand? Yes, it is. It's um, Thailand, the minimum amount of hours is the 120 hours. Um, so that's perfect, Niamh. Um, and just to let people know, I suppose something important to know with the Thailand position, you do need to have a bachelor's degree. Okay, and that's gonna be a little bit different to the girls um, when they're talking about Italy. But for the Thailand one, you do need to have um, a bachelor's degree just so you know in any discipline. Um, and if anybody, if you could just put into the group or into the chat box there, guys, if anybody has like destinations in mind, um, that would be great to know, just to get a little bit of feedback on, I know everybody's here for different destinations and different internships. So if you could just pop into the chat box there where you are wanting to hear about or where you would like to go, that would be amazing as well. Um, Another question from Niamh there, Sienna. Um, were you entitled to any time off that wasn't public holidays? Yes, so we had um, time off as well as like sick time. I don't remember off the top of my head how many days it was, but um, you also do like a visa run, which was depending on where you had to go. It was like three days, so like a week where you had to leave the country to go get your visa. Um, but it definitely felt like I had a lot of days off. They love public holidays in Thailand, yeah. guys. I'm so surprised. They love it. They love Mondays off. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. And just with the current Thailand position that's open at the moment, just so people know, you do have 23 days full holiday um, in that position, just so you know as well, um, Niamh. Okay, that's great, Sienna. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we're going to go for one more question because it's there before I move on. Was it easy to adjust to the cultural differences in Thailand? Uh, it took a, like, it's, there's definitely like a culture shock when you first get there. But I think after like a week or two, it really wasn't an issue. Um, and it really helped like talking, like the orientation, honestly, because it kind of ran through like the basics of everything that most people would do and so what not to do um and it really wasn't that big of a difference um, i think it's definitely adjusting going if you've never been to like a developing country or um which i really hadn't been to too many before so it was a bit of an adjustment but it after like the first initial shock it's really not an issue mm -hmm. And Sienna, I have a question for you because I always ask people this question. What's your favorite food in Thailand? What was your favorite dish? Um, I definitely loved all of the, like, the curry. I think green curry was my favorite. Um, yeah. Or a green papaya salad, I think. Yeah. Like my I'm sure I've been thinking about Thai food as my favorite. Mm. Yeah. Great, great. Thanks so much, Sienna. Um, okay. Uh, Lauren, if you're happy to kind of give you a little bit of an experience and top tips, guys. And again, Lauren was in, is in Italy, excuse me. So if anybody has any particular questions on this destination, uh, feel free to write them in and 
Lauren, I can kind of ask it or ask you the questions at the end then when they come up. Perfect, excellent. Uh, so hello everyone, obviously I'm Lauren. Um, I, yeah, so I did my internship with TEFL um, about two years ago and I had completed one year of university in NUIG. I was studying arts. Um, there I studied like Spanish. I love languages in general. Um, I finished the year, but I did not want to continue. I just wasn't so interested in it in the end. Um, I worked for two years and then I decided that I wanted to get back into languages and education because I love studying. Um, I researched it and Teple.ie is obviously a very reputable company. And as soon as you contact the girls, they're very, you know, full on. They are there at your disposal whenever you need them. And still two years later, they are here in contact. So it's that way. It's a great company, I think, to get involved with. Um, did all of my course online, very, you know, no problems doing that. And then I had to do um, basically give uh, an example lesson in Dublin with some of the directors from the company here in Italy. Um, that was perfect. They called me for interviews and it all went very well, thank God. Um, originally, I was offered a te teaching position in Napoli, and I don't know if anyone is familiar with the geography in Italy. It's very, very south, a big, 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 super busy city. Um, but I'm from West Mead, where there is nothing, so that was too big a jump for me. Um, I actually asked if they had a position anywhere else, and very kindly, they offered me a position in a small town called Rimini. So it's a lot more north. Um, I'm quite near Bologna, if anyone is familiar with the university, maybe there. Um, and I had never heard of it before, but it's a little coastal town. It's it reminds me of Galway, the life here, the, the people here, um, the parties, everything is amazing. Um, so I moved out here in August, September 2019. I started working. We had a few days orientation first in Florence. I got to meet actually Kate, the other teacher, and I got to meet all of the other Irish teachers. I think there were about 12 to 15 of us. Um, we got a little refresher on the method used in this school. We got to meet our, like the other staff. Um, it was very, very helpful. And it was also great to have immediately some connections from home because I came here alone. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know the language. And um, I always, for example, I've always had Kate here. If I needed to contact her, I know she is in Italy. I always have someone, you know, if I need. Um, and then returned to Rimini, immediately started teaching, a lot of support in the school. Um, it's not a very traditional school in that we have sofas and couches, it's very relaxed and um, it's more about speaking and communication than written language, which is great for me and for the students, it's a lot more natural um, communicative method. Um, and of course, I was here during the pandemic, so we got a lot of training how to teach online. Also from the Teple Institute, they were in contact with us um, to help us find more work online if we didn't have enough hours and to do some extra training. So there was a lot of support from both my school and the Teple Institute during that. Um, and it was easy. I never found the transition online difficult at all. Um, now we have returned to the school for the past few months, back to normal. I mean, we still have masks and things and some regulations, but teaching is totally normal. Um, the school I'm with is super social. Some of the students have become my best friends, actually. Um, I have not found it difficult to integrate in the town here, although it definitely helps to learn the language, which I did not know before I came here. But if you've studied Spanish or French, it's very, very similar um, and you pick it up very easily. Um, and at the moment, yeah, I'm going to stay here at least another year. I'm very, very happy here. And that's it. That's great, Lauren. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. As I said, guys, any questions there while we're on the topic of Italy? Just um, you can pop them into the chat box there. And I'll just ask you, um, Lauren, what did you think was the most helpful thing going on your own or flying solo? 
like before you went what do you think what advice would you give to people who are going on their own I tried to prepare as much as I could before I arrived so for example I had my contract I knew where I was living I had my deposit paid for my house um, and which I found through groups on Facebook I searched actually through student groups and a landlady changed her contract around a little for me so she could have it for a worker instead um, and I just tried to educate myself as much about my particular town and the way of life as much as I could because I'm not uh, very shy so I didn't have a lot of nerves but I think it really helps to be very very informed about how you project your life will be there absolutely. Yeah and there was a question there from Fee can I ask Lauren what the cost of living is in relation to the wages that you get on the internship? Perfect. So my contract, we're a very new school and because of this pandemic and everything, we're still growing, I will say, in that phase. Um, my contract is minimum eight hour, 18 excuse me, hours a week. Um, and of that much, I can live comfortably. It's no problem. And when the school is a lot busier, I have money to travel, money to do everything I like. I mean, I go out every weekend and I'm drinking and eating and having a great time so it's definitely not something you need to worry about um with regards rent in Rimini in particular it's very varied in Italy for example the more north you are the more it will cost for everything in general and if you're in the south it will be a lot cheaper um I'm quite north um the rent is like the rent you would pay in Galway maybe as a student um, at the moment, I pay a really, really good rate. I was very lucky um, in the center of the city for 300 euro a month. Um, the bills, electricity, gas are a little more than in Ireland, but not shockingly more expensive. Um, your phone is like eight euros a month and travel is cheap around the country. They have great train systems. So. I definitely think like for the money you are paid, you have no problems at all. Great to hear. That's really good to know. And I'm just going to pop in that website I was talking about, guys, into the chat box there. It's called numbio.com. And basically, if you go onto that website, you can type in the cost of living of any city. So, for example, if it was Lauren, she just type in Rimini and they give you the cost of a bus ticket. They give you the cost of a Big Mac. They always use those like pint of milk, whatever it is. Um, how we compare <laughs> and there's another question there for you Lauren as well did you find it difficult not having the language initially um at the beginning I'm in a very small school so I had um, all of, obviously my colleagues all speak English and at the start I just had them and their girlfriends and boyfriends and for the first maybe until from September until December I only knew them um, and I was all speaking English and it was very nice because it was still new um but then after that i think you need to just be very brave and just go into bars and go into cafes and just talk to everyone you see and i like i walk into a restaurant and i'll just sit down and talk to people and you need to just not care like and speak to everyone and in this way i have made so many friends i know everyone in the town and you when you are forced to speak the language it's easy and just do the typical things watch netflix in italian and listen to the music i've never sat down and studied it but i have no problem having any conversation at this point wow well wow. very good to know and my favorite question ever what is your favorite dish in italy Oh god the carbonara but you can only eat it in rome only it's it's a different thing they don't put cream it's a totally different recipe from at home but it is fantastic mm. is it completely egg is it without the cream exactly yes yeah. really traditional it's super super heavy but it is amazing <laughs> <laughs> my dream pasta and wine <laughs> yeah um, great guys if there's any other questions for Lauren you can pop them in there and if there's anything that you think of again in a few minutes then I'll get back to them um, but thank you so much Lauren that was great and Kate, if you want to go ahead Hi um, I'm Kate and I'm currently working in Trieste in Italy it's like 
in the north, like past Venice on the edge, like on the border with uh, Slovenia. Um, at the moment, I'm actually finished working there. So I'm gonna, I'm moving to a school close to Milan. So I'm transferring. And one of the directors like emailed my boss and was like, I'm so happy a teacher is transferring. He was very, very happy, very nice. Um, so I'm transferring, so that's great. But I'll talk mostly about my experience in Trieste because I haven't started here yet. Um, I basically, Lauren covered everything about TEFL. I did the same thing as her, did the orientation three days, which I thought was really, really great for um, just to get to know a group of people that speak your language, that come from your same cultural background kind of thing. It's really nice to have that group of people and then you can stay in contact like as Lauren said, she knows she has me and I know that I have her. Like every now and again, we see each other like this and we're like, oh, hey. <laughs> um, and I'm the same, like I haven't, I did one year of university and then I basically just was like, the university's not for me right now, maybe in the future. And then I moved to Italy like four years ago and I found, I, as an au pair, so like the cheapest way to do it basically. And then I went home because our parents not for me um, and then I found TEFL Institute and I did the course the 100, I think 120 hour one I did at the time and that was really useful I was working at the time as well so I was working a lot and about two years after doing the course or maybe a year and a half after doing the course I decided that I was going to move to Italy and it was perfect timing because they just started this program this internship um, to go and work in Italy so it was great timing for me and uh, eventually I did the same thing as Lauren, went to Dublin, did a, a sample lesson, which uh, was scary for me because I struggled with those kinds of things. So I was pretty proud of that. And then I got an interview with my boss and my boss is lovely. Um, and I got the job. I was very, very happy. The one thing I will say is that the school is so supportive. So TEFL is supportive. Everyone, there's help along the way, everywhere you go um my school was a new school so it had just opened I was the first teacher and I'd never taught before so that was kind of scary mm -hmm. at the time um but it was it was nice though because I was kind of slowly thrown in but then it kind of picked up quite fast which works for me because I will just get scared and run away <laughs> so being thrown into it, I was like okay I got this um, that was very, very good. And um, in terms of teaching, I was teaching adults. And like Lauren said, it's a communicative method, not very much writing or um, it's not a teacher focused um, lesson. It's a student focused method. It's very, I love it, to be honest. I would love to learn Italian in that way. Um, and I also didn't have like, much Italian as well like I don't think I'm as confident as Lauren in Italian now but I'm not <laughs> so um and some of my tips for for um living in Italy as well I think something about moving here find the time give yourself time to find an apartment whether that's before you come here or before or when like book an Airbnb or something just find the time to find an apartment that you like especially like with pandemic times you want to know that you have a nice place to live um I think I was quite lucky in terms of I had a nice little living space and a nice two nice really nice roommates housemates and and I had a terrace as well so that was that was the highlight of my apartment um but I do know some people that have found apartments without ovens and stuff so just have your criteria clear about what you need um something else is just don't be afraid to ask for help from teachers from your bosses everybody's willing to help from TEFL even during the pandemic they were so so nice um like Lauren said they offered training online job offers online those kinds of things ways to find work whether we were working or just stuck for hours and that kind of thing um during the very first lockdown I wasn't working so I didn't do that quick transition into online. I took a break from work basically because I didn't have the tools to work from home. So that was um, quite interesting. Um, I 
was there and then when I came back to school it was a very slow process of coming back into online teaching for me which was quite nice because I wasn't just thrown back into reality after a lockdown <laughs> um yeah and another thing like Lauren said some of her students are her best friends now don't be afraid to make friends with students like the sooner you let go of that professional student teacher boundary the sooner you make friends the sooner you get on with them and the sooner you get along in the city as well like it's just it's much better for everyone like because we have a different mentality of working whereas Italians are all about making connections and that's one way to make a connection um also I didn't have much Italian when I came here but I did have keywords to say hello how are you that kind of thing and that helps just when you walk into shops but a lot of places they do have English some cities not as much as others but if you're in a big city obviously there's going to be a lot of people that speak English it's a requirement for most jobs so don't be too stressed about it but if you're going to a small city well like Trieste it's very small and they're so they don't really want to speak English with you so you need a few keywords just to say hello I'm okay you know uh, I don't need your help or I do need help whatever it is just learn some key phrases it'll help you and also if you can speak half English half Italian that works amazingly also um, and also in terms of like teaching I'd say like set time aside to prep not too much time to prep because that's something that I struggled with in the beginning I was like oh my god there's so much to do set time to prep and don't go over that because otherwise like you won't get time to travel you won't get time to see other places and you know there's a lot of things to do around in Italy and it, the lifestyle here is amazing so don't miss out <laughs> absolutely yeah. there's a question that just came in there um Kate I'll ask you clear routine just wondering what the class sizes are like in terms of student numbers um the maximum number is seven so like you can have anything between one student to seven students. Um, so like you don't have a big group at all. You're working with a small group in it, in my company anyway, in my school and all the schools with this company. They have small groups, very focused. You can have people that cancel at last minute. So it can be four cl class of four, whatever it is. I think now with the pandemic, it's um, a maximum of six, I think. But um, yeah. So you get a lot of one-to-one -one speaking time for each individual student, which is great for learning. Great, great. And what piece of advice would you give for people going over solo, flying solo? What would you say is the a piece of advice that you give for people going on their own? Um, hmm, flying solo, don't be afraid to connect with the people that work in the school. I know one of my colleagues, she came from Australia. First she flew to Scotland and then she went to Italy. But before she did, she was already in contact with someone that worked there, finding an apartment with her. Um, because once you get a job, you're in contact with the school. So contact them, ask who can I be in contact with? Who can I ask for help? You know, all the team are ready to help. That's the most amazing thing about it is all of them, the consultants, the teachers, um, especially the Italian speakers, if you need help, that helps so much. That's really good. And I'm always going to ask you a little bit of question. Um, what's your favorite food in Italy? Um, the carbonara is pretty good, but I'm going to go with um, pizza and also ice cream. Gelato. Okay, but like, yeah. Sorry? That's the gelato, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The ice cream's good. Yeah. There's just one more question there I'll ask you, Kate. Do any of you teach, so either Lauren, Sienna, or actually any of you guys, do any of you teach online outside of your school hours to get more, sorry, outside of your school to get more teaching hours? I don't anyway, like there's no need for it. Like I don't even stress about how many hours I'm doing in a week because it's just, you don't need to. Money's there, it's grand, it's survivable. Mm -hmm. I love that attitude. Like, what's that expression? Don't live to work, work to live. It's so true. And I think a lot of people in the pandemic have realized, you know, mm. life's too short. 
Yeah, absolutely. But feel free to get a job online if you'd like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that's really good guys so I'm just going to kind of run through now what we can do so if anybody wants to pop in another few questions we're all here for another 10 minutes feel free to do so um, so guys what I wanted to say is that the TEFL Institute at the moment we do have lots of internships and different jobs but at the moment they're either full um, not running this year there's been a little bit of a limit on positions because of the pandemic and everything like that so we've had very limited availability so, for example, um, the internship that Sienna went on is completely full. The, the two girls there, that one's completely full um, at the moment. But if any of you are interested in Italy or have a, a specific kind of destination in mind, what I will do is I'll pop in the email here. And if you could just email me to make life a little bit easier with your own background in terms of qualifications, experience, and any destinations you kind of have in mind. And then I'll get one of the advisors, either myself or someone, one of my, um, one of the girls to give you a call and kind of let you know what options you have. And that would make the process a whole lot easier. At the moment, we have an internship in Taiwan open, um, available to go in November, if anybody's interested there. And we also have that Thailand, Thailand position I was speaking about. So if anybody's interested in there, feel free. Now there's very, very limited spots on those. I think maybe three, um, and I think it's only two for Thailand or something like that. So it's um, quite limited, but Italy is full. But if anybody wants to pop their name on the waiting list, feel free to send an email as well. And as soon as a position becomes available um, or we get more schools, um, then of course you, you'll be contacted um, but yeah, so if anybody's interested in those destinations, please get in touch. For anybody here who's kind of looking for to go independently, that's also an option, guys, if you feel free that you just want to kind of get yourself qualified, get a qualification under your belt, then that's also an option. We also provide the training, so you can just get the qualification under your belt, and then you can also, um, we also pro provide a recruitment service, um, that will help you and guide you towards getting a job. Obviously, we can't guarantee, we never can, but we're more than happy to kind of help you um, and guide you in the right direction in terms of getting a job and as well, um, kind of just guide you in the right direction um, in terms of getting work and things like that, or if you want to get TEFL trained as well. Um, I think I think that's it from me, unless anybody else has any other questions. I just got a direct message there to say, when is the starting date for these ones? So the ones that are open at the moment, Taiwan is November and the Thailand one is October. But for both of those internships and positions, um, the closing date is the end of June, um, just in terms of getting visas, work permits, yourself organized. Um, so if it's something you want to do, or if you want to go on, on an internship around October, November, um, it's something to start thinking about now. Um, and just for anybody as well who might be interested, um, this is a little longer down the line, but if anybody is interested in South Korea, um, that filled very, very fast and our positions were full, um, I think it was within a week or something, um, for the September start date and the October one. So, but we will be opening our February start date, um, I think in a couple of weeks. So around mid July, the end of July, we'll have a South Korea internship opening up as well. Um, and what people can be doing is maybe getting their TEFL training done in preparation. So you can apply straight away and get all that covered before you apply for the um, internship that will also be opening up. Um, and yeah. That, that's it guys um, my own advice would be um, I haven't obviously done an internship at the TEFL Institute of Ireland but I've definitely taught abroad in many countries and my one piece of advice is life is way too short to not do it so if this is something that's really like in the back of your head or like kind of something that you've been thinking about for years you know and it's just there you're on this webinar for a reason you wouldn't be attending today if you didn't have any interest so just do it go for it and we are Everyone here in the office is really, everybody who works here has a real passion about TEFL and have all done it before and love to talk about it and to get people to go. So if you have any qualms, any queries, please, please get in touch. 
I'm more than happy to kind of help you and get you sent to the right destination. And just to let anybody, everybody know that, you know, if you're here and you don't have a bachelor's degree and you feel like, oh God, maybe I don't, maybe I can't get abroad because I don't fit the requirements. There are options for absolutely everybody. And that's the beauty of TEFL. So just send in an email with your profile and I'll do my very best to get you to uh, a lovely destination, eating your pasta or your, your Thai food, whatever it is, and a glass of wine for sure. Um, yes, we're very happy to help.